so many people fall in love with how they made their money. If, if you fall in love with how you made your money, you're going to just get complacent. You're going to get kind of comfortable. Yep. And, and, and you can't do that in the digital space. Like Facebook changes algorithms all the time. I mean, there's more competition, more money is coming into the news feed. Um, what used to work before, which was, hey, my name is Pedro. I have a book. Come and see me. Yeah. That doesn't work anymore. No, it doesn't. Like, there's a like hundred guys that have books now, and 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 so it's all about as a digital marketer, you have to be committed to being a lifelong learner and student, because if you're not innovating and and coming up with fresh content, fresh ideas, um, you're gonna just get you're gonna get left behind, and that's why so many of my peers just stick with direct mail because they don't want to innovate. They're they're willing to pay a much higher price to acquire a customer because they just don't want to work as hard as I work to constantly create fresh campaigns and new ideas. But that's, I'm that's, a marketer. Like yeah. I love it. I mean, I I, I I don't I don't even know what I'd be doing myself if I wasn't able. Marketing to me has allowed me to give my expression and my creativity. Yeah. A, a real outlet to, to not just build a business around it, but also impact consumers and clients who would have never who never would have met me through the mailbox. You know, I would say, fortunately, my business partner, he's been in the game for about 28 years. So he's he solved a lot of the problems. He, You know, he's dealt with a lot of the pitfalls that I didn't have to experience. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, cool. So even though we are a new company, we've got a lot of the systems in place that has been forged over 28 years. Mm -hmm. But I would say that my, sh my struggle would probably be the same struggle that all entrepreneurs have, which is being short-sighted. Yes. Trying to shortcut the process for success is it's not the thing to do. You want to grow organically. You want to do it the right way because sometimes you get out in front of your headlights and you'll run yourself over. Wow. So growing too fast, believe it or not, is actually one of the worst things you can do. It's true. And I have to slow down on purpose. And remember, listen, there are no shortcuts on the path to success. And so it's just being patient. I know it's hard for us entrepreneurs to be patient, Yep. but we have to be patient. There's these times when, uh, I call them divine moments, okay? Mm -hmm. And there, there's times when God has put people in your path that um, maybe some are doing great and some others are not, not doing, doing perfectly. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're maybe having some difficulty and you want to help help as many people as possible. So I, I remember there's a story that, that I was, um, well, it, it was, it, it's about me and my business journey. I, and back in 2007, eight and nine with, with the economic collapse, I had a home maintenance business that we were doing all the marketing and the sales and getting everything <laughs> ramped up and things were going really well. And then I had, I had actually hired a gentleman who who wasn't wasn't doing very well. He mm -hmm. he had he'd come out of a bad situation, and at the end of the day, um, when the economic collapse of 2008 came and nine, um, he ended up actually coming coming on board before that, working in the company, and then he ended up actually buying my company from me. Wow! And he. He actually supported our family during that difficult time because he had a way of, of kind of leveraging um, the, the economic downturn and actually building the business in a way that I didn't know how to do. So the, the power of teamwork during these difficult times, uh, Luke chapter 10 talks about how Jesus sent the disciples out by twos. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. You know, if one person falls, the other one can lift you back up. These kind of things are principles in business that we oftentimes forget because we're reading books often about these men and women who are multimillionaires and they've failed 400 times, but they don't talk about all those failures in their books. Nope. They talk about the high, the highlights and the and the the great moves they had and the, everything, how everything just came to them, and all of a sudden they were a millionaire overnight. And <laughs> the truth of the matter is. They were not millionaires overnight. They, they had to make a lot of choices and partner with a lot of people that had, you know, that helped them get to where they are. Their team members were actually the key to their success. It wasn't them, it was their team. And so ultimately we're all in partnership and, and helping each other on this journey if we are in it to win it for our friends and, and associates. 
one of the things as an educator that I've learned over the years is everyone learns in a little different manner. Some more by listening, some more by hands-on or tactile, and certainly the more different senses we use in the learning process, you know, the better it's going to be for sure. And it also made me think of a quote from one of my favorite uh, authors uh, from the book Communicating for Results. Uh, I think it's Cheryl Hamilton. And she said, it's not the message that's sent that counts, it's the one received. Mm. And so from not only a personal uh, experience, but also in business, I found it's important to think about not what you want to send, but what you, what you believe the receiver is going to hear. And that, of course, is true in radio Ooh. as well as it is in any other business. 